Sandy for a five-year period was unhittable. The day I was in pitching, I used to sit down just to watch him. His fastball and his breaking ball, his overhand curve, he was the master. There were a lot of times you knew what was coming and you still couldn't hit it. Koufax was so good, he stumped the game's best hitters, even when they knew what was coming. I knew he would tell you. He said, here it come. And the ball would get there and go up. It, wouldn't go, it didn't do anything but just go up. I couldn't hit it. It start here, go up. He threw what I call radio balls. You could hear him, but you couldn't see him. It was a, definitely an audio experience. he just hear it. Just... The curveball up here, which is normally a ball, is now a strike from him. Because you don't see it every day, you just can't react to it. And you almost felt like he could pitch into a no-hit game any day he walked out there. Some pitchers go out there, they don't have their good stuff. Well, I, I never saw a day that Koufax didn't have good stuff. And his fourth no-hitter was perfect. One strike away. Here's the pitch. Swing on and miss the perfect game. Koufax reached still another level in the World Series, where in eight starts, his ERA was incredibly below one. You've had four no-hitters, a perfect game, have a World Series record of 15 in one game. Where does this one fit in as far as thrills are concerned? I don't know, Vinny. Uh, this has got to be as high as any of them. This whole year is a thrill. In his final season, he won 27 games, making it 129 in a magical six-year run. In those six or seven years, he was something beautiful to watch. He was the pitcher of that decade, maybe, I mean, any decade, really.